Why did no one tell me things like this exist? I think it's gonna be a good day. Almost as good as the day I found this little guy. Now we just need to find what to do with our newfound power. I've got my first idea. We're gonna see if we can bury a man alive in gold. Are you enjoying your shower? Okay, maybe you can't bury him, but you can give him a nice pile of gold to stand on. Probably shouldn't have done this to a man on the bridge. But we've confirmed you can bury a man in gold. And also a river. I'm already so annoyed at myself. Because I just can't help but wonder how long it would take to fill this entire thing in with gold. Remember kids, measure twice and cut once. So far so good, but this literally took 3 hours to load in. Given the current frame rate, I think this is as much gold as I can fit in the river. But don't ever let anyone tell you you can't build a bridge out of gold. So let's hurt the game with pickaxes instead. And the first thing we're gonna need is a single pickaxe. Apparently this doesn't work if you have this many. That's okay, we can all learn from my mistakes. We need 300 iron. That's no problem. When my game asks me for some iron, we get it some iron. Not sure if it has to be in bar form now that I think about it. But I'm gonna guess that it does, so let's try this again. It's quite easy to smelt it down, we just need to use a magnet on a stick. I feel like we're dumping more of it out than we're actually carrying, and we missed entirely. But who needs accuracy when you have persistence? Our very first iron bar. That weighs 3,800 pounds, but you can never have too much iron. But now we can hammer that to make a better pickaxe. But now I can impress everyone with the size of my holes. But let's be honest, it's not that impressive yet. One little magnet on a stick and the hole is filled right in. It's like it never existed. Well, I do have a lot of gold, it's just currently in low earth orbit. And I'm not really sure I can deal with that one, so we're going to have to do it the old-fashioned way. So I'm just going to take a few hours to dig my way to the bottom and set up an entire intricate mine so we can hopefully find a little bit of gold. I just hope we find enough gold. But just to be sure. You know what? We can do better. Yeah, this was obvious from the beginning. I just hope it's big enough. <laughs> so far so good. Starting to figure out what the problem is. It's me. I'm the problem. How about a little redesign? This will surely work better. Now the gold has time to organize itself on the way down. Or it can just immediately jam up. Then we're left with a useless tube of gold. I mean, we've probably got enough gold in there by now. I think that'll about do it. So that gives us a gold pickaxe. Are we impressed with my holes yet? Now we need shards. 1,000 pounds of beautiful shards. I think I've got an idea of how we can accomplish that. We use an appropriate number of conveyors. I don't love the way they're drifting to one side, but they're making it into the thing so I'm happy. So then it's just a matter of scaling it up to the point where we're satisfied. When the conveyor turns blue we know we're getting close, and so far so good. I can't believe this is actually working as well as it is. Never mind, I knew it was too good to be true. Well instead I've left this going for about an hour, so that's probably going to weigh a couple pounds. 316,000 pounds, it weighs so much it literally carries no value at all. I just hope it's enough to upgrade the pickaxe. Now look at our holes. They're actually getting pretty big. But next we're gonna need emeralds and those aren't so easy to find. Unless you're willing to cheat and then you've got all the emeralds you could ever want. And luckily the receiver hole on this thing is huge so we should be able to really force feed it some emeralds. Finally, a setup that allows me to be my creative self. So let's just go ahead and double down. And it's the weirdest thing, for some reason the game keeps crashing. Oh, I think my thing might be getting overfilled. It could probably only process so many at a time, which kind of makes sense. Not to worry though, we can just generate one that's 100,000 pounds in an instant. And that's pretty lucky for us, because I don't know how many times I could remake that contraption over there. Onwards, green pickaxe. Before doing anything, we need the whole test. And then we need 1,300 pounds of sapphires, but more importantly, we need a fun way to get 1,300 pounds of sapphires. But I couldn't help but notice something really fun earlier. If you use one of our patented spawners but let it start to back up, it'll just keep forcing sapphires in there increasing the pressure. I think you can see where this is going. Because it doesn't take very long before you can remove that and you get a sapphire explosion. So just picture that but times like a trillion. Yeah, this is gonna be fun. We'll come back in half an hour. And while I wait, I can sit here and bask in my hurtful reminders of how stupid I am. It's been a few good minutes, the game's only a little laggy, so I think that's about right. Since things tend to escalate quickly here, we're gonna go ahead and pull this out and watch the explosion rain. <laughs> the game doesn't love it. Maybe unsurprisingly, I went a little bit too far again. I've spent an alarming amount of hours waiting on this particular game today. Let's try that again with a 30 second sapphire explosion. That's not very dramatic. You know what? Sapphires were never my friend anyway. So here's one that's 100,000 pounds, good enough. Which brings us to Ruby and a big old hole in the ground to celebrate. 
Our next objective is to fit a million rubies into this, which sadly needs to be connected to water. You know what, that's alright, I really come to like wasting my time. But I guess if I didn't, I wouldn't be doing what I do. Now to very efficiently feed a whole bunch of rubies into it. I think maybe right about here. Why are they floating upwards? What is this? Things are supposed to go down, not up. That one's working normally. I don't know what's going on up there. I don't know why things are going upwards. We're gonna just ignore that. Well, look at that. I'm so very close. I've got to say, that was a pretty good guesstimate all the way up there. Since I can't really be bothered to go back down again, I'm mostly just going to guesstimate from up here. Some of these are bound to make it in. It's beautiful. We're going to have a massive ruby before you know it. This probably isn't the greatest idea considering these aren't raw resources, so these are here to stay. If the game lags, I can't recover it. But I'm fairly confident that like 1 in a thousand rubies will land in the box. And also spread themselves out for about one square mile. Actually a lot of them are landing in the holes we've been digging. Surprisingly the game is starting to lag, so we're gonna cheat it with a magnet. I don't know how much individually these weigh, but I'd wager it's more than zero. Plus we're doing a good thing for the world by removing these garbage rubies. <laughs> Just one more bite for my hungry little moron. I think this is the big one. I really hope I don't drop this. <laughs> There's rubies everywhere. Okay, great. 42,000 pounds. That means we get a ruby pickaxe. Which makes an alarmingly big hole. But now we need claudium. It would be a shame to waste this. We should repurpose it. Because I kind of got a pretty good idea how this is going to work. First, we've made it bigger. Then we need to fill it up with claudium. Which really doesn't take long with how fast these go. We're already starting to overflow the edges. Deleted the spawners, now we just need a little bit in the middle. At the rate those things go, it doesn't take long. It's beautiful. And probably also worth 400 million dollars. But you're probably wondering, how do we turn this into a pickaxe? Well, I've cleverly placed the smelter directly below the mountain of fun. So all we gotta do is delete the windows, and it all comes falling down. Not entirely sure why my brain isn't working today, but we have a small hiccup. Maybe the game just sort of doesn't work this way anymore. I can make it fall down in increments. Oh, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to dive straight up into it with the magnet. All right, it's time to go spelunking. Uh, I think we're already stuck. Wait, wait, I'm making some of it fall. Oh, the game doesn't like this one little bit. Is it working? I think it was working for a second. It all starts to fall and move all at once and the game does not love it. But it is actually working. I'm making the whole thing flow down to the bottom. That's very satisfying. I've done it. I see daylight. We've made it to the surface. Alright, I had wager enough claudium has fallen into the smelter to satisfy our needs. I'm just gonna have to channel my inner mole to reach it. You know, after reloading, the game doesn't actually feel that bad. I found it, our long lost treasure. I feel like if I just jiggle the magnet around, the claudium will fall into it. Alright, let's see what we got. I also buried my scale. Not the biggest problem in the world, 3,500 pounds. I feel like that could have been heavier, but we weren't exactly efficient about this one. I'm just glad I still have my hammer. But we now have a claudium pickaxe, which makes claudium size holes. Which are definitely very, very, very big. 400 pounds of onyx. For this one, we're actually going to use the claudium pickaxe to dig all the way to the bottom. Take a moment to enjoy and admire this fine hole. Since I had accuracy troubles earlier, I figured that more smelters would solve that problem. Plus with a hole like this, we just can't miss. And then I remembered it's onyx, and onyx doesn't smelt in those. And then I realized, logic doesn't matter in this video anyway, so we're gonna fill the hole up with onyxes anyway. Because this just feels right. It's so mesmerizing. And it fills up so very quickly. The game started to lag really hard, so I had to shut down the operation, but I got way closer than I thought to the top of this. There is a billion onyxes down below. We're at the point where even reloading the game isn't really gonna save this. So after uh, carefully crafting this onyx, that's gonna give us the onyx pickaxe, which is pure black. And it makes a hole this big. So for a little contrast, they're definitely getting bigger. The next pickaxe requires a lot of scrap. Which means, sir, I'm gonna need to borrow you for a minute. To make scrap, we need to throw stuff onto here. Pretty sure we can use just about anything. Once we add a little fire, it turns into a nice piece of scrap. The problem is, I can't make this spawner produce anything that turns into trash, so I might have to do this the manual way. Luckily, it can be really quick to spawn in chairs. And once I feel like I've got myself nicely lined up, I just gotta sit back and spawn away. They'll, uh, they'll eventually get to where they're going. I can't remember how much scrap we need. Sir, you're in the way of my chairs. I guess we get to find out how many of these burn at once. Uh, it's not a huge amount as it turns out. But if you start to poke at some of these, they will actually start to fall in on themselves. I mean, there's probably an easier way to do this, but I can't think of it. 
A single one of those scrap things I just melted is 5,000 pounds. I think we need a million. Although the biggest of these is 26,000 pounds, you could actually do it this way. You just need to do 40 times this amount. Which, um, yeah, we did, sure. Yeah, let's say 10 million pounds. That's close enough. Oh yeah, I think you can actually make this one. But that doesn't mean you can't get it. It makes a hole that's a little bit bigger. One click and all of the dirt disappears. Which is obviously a pretty big hole. And then we're just left with our beautiful creation.